to Pathfinder School, taking your wilderness self-reliance to the next level by training individuals, families, and groups in ancestral, frontier, and modern survival skills to keep you alive when the chips are down. Come visit us soon at the PathfinderSchoolLLC.com to sign up for a class today. Afternoon guys, Dave Canterbury at the Pathfinder School. Appreciate you joining me for this video. Um, this is kind of an offbeat video for what I usually cover, but I thought that it was prudent at this point. We have a large storm system coming up the east coast of the United States within the next few days, and a lot of people have sent me questions and concerns about, you know, what do we do to prepare ourselves and our home for this possible storm? I don't do videos like this most of the time. I do self-reliance videos within a woodland environment. But I too have a family and a home to take care of, so I'm gonna kinda of share with you what I would do to take care of my home in the event of a storm and take care of my family in the you know, case that a power outage may come or something like that, or we have a large snowstorm that puts the power out by ice or things like that, or we don't have access to water or food or a way to go get those things, or the markets are emptied out by people that are preparing for the storm. So I thought we'd talk about that for just a minute. Let's start with your home. You can pretty much expect the worst. That's what you want to do. If you expect the worst and you prepare for it, then you can handle those type situations. So understanding your home is important. Do you have a multi-level home or do you have a single story home? That can be important for several reasons. If you don't have high winds, but you have flooding, you're better off to get your family into a centralized room on an upper level. If you don't have that luxury or you have high winds, then you may have to choose a lower level. The higher levels are going to hold heat better than the lower levels if you're worried about the weather as far as the heat and cold. In Ohio, we would worry about cold because it could get very chilly and if the electricity went out and you didn't have a way to heat your home, I have a fireplace in my home as well as several kerosene heaters. Kerosene heaters are one of the best options for heating your home in an emergency because you can store fuel ahead of time, you can cook on top of a kerosene heater, they burn long, they burn warm, the larger ones will heat two to three rooms very comfortably. What I suggest that you do is take blankets or something of that nature and block off all but one room so that you only have to heat a small area. A large room in a second story level would be good if you're trying to hold in heat and you don't have high winds to contend with. A lower level, same thing. Close in one large room if you can that's big enough for your family to be in comfortably for a few days and sleep in and operate in and then put blankets or something on the doorways and things like that to hold that heat in. Get your kerosene heater fired up and then you're good to go as far as the heat level goes. You want at least two blankets, good heavy blankets, wool if possible, but good heavy comforters will work inside a, inside a house where you're protected from the elements. And then you can keep your bodies warm as well. You need to prepare for that because core temperature control, just like we teach in the Pathfinder system, is very important in any emergency to make sure you take care of. Beyond that, you're going to need to see to your other needs of water and food. Now, if you don't have the luxury of the kerosene, then you can use candles, and candles are good heat sources, as well as being fairly cheap, but they're also dangerous because they're open flame. So I'd recommend the kerosene heater. For lighting, you can use flashlights, you can use headlights, you can use candles, but again, then you are at the mercy of batteries and things of that nature for your lighting, and I don't like to be in that situation. So I'd rather use some type of a fuel lantern that I can store fuel for, and store wicking for, like some kind of a lamp oil lantern would be a much better choice in my opinion for lighting inside your house. I would go with the headlights and things like that for emergencies only. As far as water goes, you need to store at least five gallons of water per person for an emergency because you never know when you're not going to have water. If you're on city water or if you're on an electric pump, things of that nature, you may not have water. Now you do have the luxury in a storm sometimes of being able to collect water outside. That's where five gallon buckets come in and I would store at least 25 gallon buckets just stacked inside of each other in a corner of your garage somewhere for emergencies because five gallon buckets will come in handy for a lot of things from hygiene to wash tubs to water collection to storage of things that you need to keep dry. All of those things five gallon buckets are good for. They're containers and containers are always an important element of any survival situation or emergency scenario. Back to the water again. I would store at least two to five gallons of straight chlorine bleach, unscented. 
You can use that to disinfect your water if you have to, if you don't have the luxury of boiling the water. You can use chlorine bleach for this disinfection. It's also good for hygiene, for cleansing, to kill germs, and other things like that. Bleach is a good all-around chemical to store and keep for emergency situations. Store that water, collect that water. If you have a kerosene heater, you have the ability to heat that water. It may not boil unless you're really roaring that thing up, but it will definitely get very, very hot and you can pasteurize it over time. You know, 30 to 40 minutes at 160 degree temperature is gonna be enough to pasteurize that water, but it also gives you the ability to cook food. So now let's talk about food storage for a minute. Food storage for emergency situations like that should be foods that you eat all the time. It shouldn't be something that you just bought because it was cheap and your family doesn't like it. You want something that your family eats all the time. My suggestion is to buy packets of food that can be put in hot water to be heated up, like foil type packets of pre-prepared rice and meat dishes and things of that nature, or canned foods, and make sure that you store enough can openers, P38s, whatever the case may be, that you can open those foods up very easily. And if they're foods that you can eat without heating them, that's all the better because then you're not wasting fuel necessarily to take care of that. But again, if you're using kerosene heat, you're wasting fuel anyway, or you're using fuel anyway to heat with, and you can cook on that same fuel. But canned fruits and things of that nature that you can eat raw right out of the can are good. Canned meats that you can eat cold. Fresh vegetables that you buy directly before an emergency or that you're growing in your garden are always good because you can eat those raw as well if you need to. If you start buying canned vegetables, you can eat those raw, but most of the time people prefer to cook those things. If you have the ability, again, to heat those things up on a kerosene heater, then you're all set. Make sure that you've got some plastic ware in case you don't have the luxury of washing dishes. Make sure that you have containers you can eat out of that the food comes into already, like the packets, like the cans, and then enough plastic silverware and things that you don't necessarily have to wash those things. If you don't have the luxury of doing that, you can just toss them into one of the five gallon buckets. The other thing that I would store a lot of would be large one gallon Ziploc bags. Any bags that you have from Walmart, Kmart, Tractor Supply, any place that you shop that gives you plastic bags, store those up. Store them in one of those bags and just stuff it completely full because you never know when those are going to come in handy for putting over your hands for sanitation or for storing things. The other thing that I would make sure that I have a stockpile of as far as at least one full box, maybe two, is 55 gallon drum liners, three mil contractor size. They're kind of expensive, they're about $15 a box but you can store a lot of things in those plastic bags and you can find a lot of uses for those plastic bags over the course of an emergency situation. I'm not going to try to get into too much of what you can use this or that for. You'll be able to improvise with these items that I'm telling you to hang on to or telling you to store when the time comes. The five gallon buckets can be used for hygiene as well as for toilets if needs be. You can line those toilets with those plastic bags that you've collected you can then tie them up and store those inside a 55 gallon drum bag until you can get rid of them when the storm is over or when the emergency's passed so that you're not having to try to flush toilets and things like that when you may not have water. As far as hygiene goes, I would not recommend that you go buy a bunch of paper products, a bunch of paper towels and a bunch of things like toilet paper. What you should stock up on are things like baby wipes, lots of them. The big boxes that you buy when you have a baby and you've got to change your diapers all the time, get five or six boxes of those for your family. They'll work for hygiene purposes. They'll work for washing silverware if you absolutely have to. They'll work for you know the things that you need to do as far as cleaning your body goes. If you get the disinfectant type wipes, you can use them for disinfection purposes as well. Okay guys, well I appreciate you joining me for this quick video on how to prepare your home for an emergency situation like the Frankenstorm that we're about to experience on the eastern seaboard of the United States. I will try to put some type of an organized list of these items up either at the beginning, the middle, or the end of this video to kind of give you a checklist of things that I would make sure that you have in your home prior to this emergency. I thank you for joining me for another video. I thank you for your support, for your views, everything that you do for myself, for my family, and my school. I hope this timely video helps you out during this time of emergency. Stay safe, and I'll be back with another video as soon as I can.